go. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Colin, and I'm here to help here or to present this uh, this front end framework overview of uh, Angular, React, Vue, and Blazor. Um, if you're not able to hear me or anything, go ahead and just uh, uh, throw in a message, and uh, uh, someone will let me know for sure. So, um, but I'll go ahead and get started here. This is essentially just a quick overview of the differences between um, some of these front end frameworks that uh, we work with on a daily basis as front end developers or full stack developers. Um, and I tend to get a lot of questions from clients and other developers on the differences and um, all the all the small intricacies uh, that these things offer. So uh, I decided to make a quick um, one stop shop instead of having to go through blog after blog to find the differences or the, the small pieces of information I need um, to let people know this. So uh, this is a presentation that will be made available for everyone. Um, that uh, you can keep uh, and save locally and uh, have it at your own needs for your own needs to inform clients or other people uh, about these differences. So uh, we'll jump into it. So again, this is the overview here. Um, the main goal again is to provide a resource for our developers and clients to quickly answer questions um, about these popular front end frameworks. Uh, and to spark some interest in them to get someone to understand uh, or to get someone interested in learning. Um, so they'll just be a quick breakdown so that you can it'll help you decide which framework works best for your project or to help inform the client to pick one. Um, if given them the chance, uh, it's meant for both developers and clients. It's not again, it's not a deep dive. It's just a quick overview um, in comparison. Um, and at the end of the day, this is all up to personal preference. And then they're all good frameworks. Um, they all have their advantages uh, and disadvantages, um, but at the end of the day, it's up to personal preference. They're all good. Um, so we'll start off here with Angular, uh, and we'll go through a little bit of a brief history so everyone can understand kind of what Angular is um, and who it's made by, blah, blah, blah. Uh, of course, Angular was made by Google. Uh, it was released in 2010, and it's one of the older frameworks. Um, Angular JS went through a, a shift uh, in 2016 with the release of Angular 2. Um, and now it's just called Angular 2 Plus, but it's known as Ang just Angular. And um, essentially it is not backwards compatible with anything before uh, uh, that. So Angular 1 is not backwards compatible. Um, it still gets updates, but it's just different. Um, you, you can't utilize Angular 2. You can't upgrade Angular 1 to Angular 2. Um, so uh, it caused a little bit of a division inside of the Angular community there in 2016. Um, but now the latest stable version uh, is Angular 11, which which was just released this past November. Um, and Angular uses the MIT license, um, which is pretty much all you need to know is that includes as long as you include the original copyright license notice in the project, you're good to go. Uh, and most of the frameworks use that license. So um, as long as you have it referenced, uh, anybody can use the framework. Uh, next is a quick history on React. Um, React is developed by Facebook, released in 2013. Um, Facebook uses React quite extensively within their projects, um, and they're currently on version 17, and that was just released in October. Um, and it uses the same MIT license as Angular. Um, Vue is one of the newer ones uh, compared to Angular. Um, it's still a little older, but uh, it's still old, but it's uh, newer compared to Angular and React. Um, it's made by an ex Google employee. Uh, it is currently open source and uh, over the last few years you have seen a, a substantial shift in popularity. Um, even though it's not backed by a large company like Facebook or Google, uh, it is huge in the open source communities. Um, the current stable version is 3.0.2, which was released in October uh, and Vue also uses the same MIT license. So um, as long as you include that in, you can use it. Blazor is a little bit different. Um, Blazor is definitely the youngest. Uh, it was started by a Microsoft employee as a personal project and then was announced in 2017 by Microsoft. So it really hasn't been around that long, um, but it's starting to gain, gain momentum within the .NET uh, c -sharp community. Uh, and Blazor uses a little bit different of a license, which is the Apache license. And then here's a quick breakdown of the bullet points 
for those uh, that history. So uh, just quick reference uh, if you needed quick information of the main types of uh, features that these offer. So now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, enough of the boring stuff, right? So uh, the comparisons essentially we're going to go through some language and syntax uh, that features uh, how how difficult is learning curve, um, the documentation that they provide, and what kind of performance they offer. Um, so again, we'll start with Angular here. Um, Angular uses TypeScript uh, as the main language, um, JavaScript TypeScript uh, as the main language for uh, the framework. Uh, it is a framework, but it's more of a platform. It's uh, essentially all inclusive. It bundles everything together, so you have access to uh, more out of the box functionality than you would get with some of the other frameworks here. Um, examples are UI DOM manipulation, state management, routing, form validations, and handling. That's all included in the default um, Angular download. So uh, it's, it all comes, you can reference and pull it in without having to worry about external packages um, like you would with React or Vue. Um, so here's a quick rundown of a basic uh, Angular component and how it's being rendered. Um, just for, you know, you can see the TypeScript and the component that it's pulling in and how you're writing uh, um, JavaScript and HTML um, within that component template. Um, there is a typo I see now, forgot to remove. Uh, but yeah, that's just a quick example piece of the code that you would uh, expect to see in an Angular project. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, the learning curve is a little bit more complex because you're, you're coding in the Angular way. Um, so if you do know JavaScript, it's a little different um, than just, you know, re-implementing JavaScript. You got to learn the Angular way of doing things. So that makes it a little bit more complicated for new uh, new users or uh, new coders to jump into quickly. Um, so again, that high learning curve for new developers, but uh, the documentation is very, very good. Uh, there's plenty of documentation and tutorials um, all over the internet just everywhere. Uh, I think it has one of the highest <laughs> uh, highest tutorial uh, documentation besides maybe React. Um, uh, but performance for this is uh, a little bit a little bit worse than React and Vue overall, but it's still very fast, especially with uh, some of the new development that's come with Angular. Um, Angular does support uh, single page applications and uh, progressive web apps uh, and also web apps. Um, you can declare the style sheet directly inside the component um, by default without having to really manage um, uh, an external style sheet like SAS. Um, uh, and then it can integrate with, or it is integrated with Material UI, Material UI. So the libraries are extensive and easy to use, and there's plenty of documentation within the Angular community for those. Um, and so with that, we'll go into React. Some quick uh, differences here. Um, React can use JavaScript, plain JavaScript or TypeScript, uh, and it also has a G, uh, JSX uh, uh, format. It's more of a front-end library than a framework. Um, it's it's definitely trimmed down comparative to Angular. It has less out-of-the-box functionality, um, so what you get pretty much from the base uh, the base uh, download with React is essentially UI DOM manipulation and component specific state management. So if you want to use uh, global man global state management, you'd have to, of course, download um, a Redux for that or Redux for that, which is an external package. Um, again, more external packaging for routing like React Router or forms like Yup and React Hooks for uh, validation, uh, React Hook validation I should put in there. Um, but yeah, those don't come out of the box with React, you need to use external packages. So it's definitely more slimmed down. Um, and then we'll move into some sample code. As you can see, it's a little bit more trimmed down than the Angular uh, code, and it's just using it's using more um, uh, JavaScript type uh, syntax uh, until you get to that return statement, which then, of course, is your JSX uh, or HTML, um, which is pretty easy to understand. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially they're doing the same thing, but just slightly less code with React um, and a little bit more JavaScript uh, heavy. 
Uh, and so React has about a medium learning curve. It, it does get a little complex, especially when you're introducing global state management and stuff like that. Um, there's very good documentation and tutorials that rival the Angular documentation and tutorials. Performance overall is a little bit better, better but not drastic. Um, some of the bonuses that React has is that it has mobile development support with React Native. Um, it is very easy to integrate with other frameworks. Um, I know WordPress is now using React. Um, you can use React within Vue. So you can utilize React very easily in other, in other frameworks throughout the JavaScript uh, packages. Uh, and then we have supporting, uh, again, supporting uh, single page web application or single page applications and progressive web apps, just like uh, Angular. Next, we got Vue. Um, it's a uh, mixed JavaScript uh, or it's mixed JavaScript or TypeScript with HTML and CSS. Uh, it's it definitely is a library um, and it has it's it's kind of default functionality on what what comes out of the box is kind of in between Angular and React. Um, it has some of the same offerings that you get with the UI DOM manipulation, the state management, uh, and the routing, which are um, which are official libraries even though they're separate packages or official libraries that um, Vue uh, manages. Uh, and then we have forms that it doesn't come with um, out of the box. As you can see, this is more, uh, it's a little different than both either Angular or React, but it, it, is, it is similar to both <laughs> in, in ways. Uh, I think this is a good, Vue is a good middle ground between the two. Uh, it does have an easy learning curve um, compared to uh, Angular. Um, I would say it's similar to React when it comes to learning curve, um, maybe a little bit quicker. Uh, it also has very good documentation and tutorials. I'd say it's a little bit worse than uh, React and Angular, but not by much at all. Um, but it does have some of the best performance out of the four. Um, they are adding mobile support, um, just like React Native. Um, it's easy and quick to start up. Uh, you don't need to do any uh, um, you don't need to do any crazy web pack or building uh, with uh, Vue. You just got to link the external style sheet or the external uh, JavaScript file, and then you can start going. Um, and again, mobile support is uh, being uh, provided through third-party integrations. Um, so our last um, framework that we're going to go over real fast is Blazor. Um, which uses C Sharp and WebAssembly. It's a framework uh, for the .NET um, uh, ecosystem, um, and it's, it has great out-of-the-box functionality. Everything comes with it. Um, you got your UI, DOM manipulation, state management, routing, forms, and um, uh, HTTP uh, requests. So uh, yeah, it's more like Angular in how it, what, what out-of-the-box functionality you get. Um, so Blazor also has some simple code. If you're familiar with uh, C Sharp, then uh, this should be very familiar for, with you, for you. Um, you're just integrating uh, C Sharp code and functions into the HTML itself. Um, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, very good for C Sharp developers um, that don't have much JavaScript experience. It has a quick learning curve experience with C Sharp, high if not, because you get, of course, you got to learn C Sharp and how to work within C Sharp. Uh, it has decent documentation, okay, tutorials since it's pretty new. Um, there's still a lot to be desired when it comes to documentation and tutorials, but the few that are out there that are, are really good. Um, I've been linked a few recently and I've been working through them, so um, it's just going to keep getting better, uh, especially as uh, Blazor keeps, Blazor and Microsoft keep updating. Um, uh, the .NET ecosystem. Um, performance is a little worse, but again, they're they're constantly working on performance. Um, it's it's getting better every release um, or every update. So soon it might just be on par with the rest of the three. Um, the good things, some of the good things or bonuses, uh, shared app logic across server and client. Um, you can leverage the existing .NET ecosystem and uh, of .NET libraries, um, and you can still use external libraries through the JavaScript uh, interop. Um, 
so running JavaScript functions and C sharp functions. So overall, Blazor is very good. Again, here's another quick rundown of uh, a quick uh, a view of the major features and uh, information on each of these frameworks uh, for quick question answering. <laughs> All right, we're getting close to the end here. So if y'all have questions, y'all can start uh, tapping them out and I can get to it. Um, but we'll, we'll finish up this real fast. Um, some of the current trends on where everything is at right now, or this was about two months ago that I made this. So uh, Angular, React, Vue, you can see Angular or React and Vue are very popular currently. Um, uh, Angular again is still very, very popular. Blazor's on the rise. That number keeps updating quite a bit every time I look at it um, for GitHub stars and forks. Um, jobs uh, are definitely higher when it comes to the React and Angular since Vue is newer. Um, they're a little bit more established when it comes to uh, availability of jobs. But Vue again, and, and Vue is, is coming up pretty quickly when it comes to job opportunities. Um, when it comes to US popularity, uh, React is crazy high when it comes to US jobs and um, Vue and Angular tend to be mixed um, between the rest of the world and what's uh, and what the US offers. Uh, and then Blazor just doesn't have a lot of upkeep or uh, implementations yet uh, when it comes to uh, uh, popularity, but it again, it is rising pretty quick. Uh, and the last but not least, probably one of the most important questions is like when to use um, and Again, this is up to personal preference, but um, this is just my breakdown uh, in my opinion, but Angular, large projects with structure, you need everything bundled together and working out of the box and, or, and quick uptime or quick up, uh, run up, whatever, I don't know how to say it. Uh, essentially larger projects with structure. React, if you need higher flexibility, if you need to integrate into different apps or um, different frameworks, um, or if you need something that you can manage from the ground up without uh, and have a lot of flexibility, it's very good. Uh, Vue is a good middle ground between the two. I think it does both really well. So if you're not sure <laughs> what to use, Vue is the one probably to go with. Uh, and Blazor is very great for um, people who, full stack developers who don't have a lot of front experience or JavaScript experience uh, with C Sharp, just everything's in C Sharp. It's very similar to how uh, Microsoft did a lot of their other things. So uh, um, it's very good. Um, if it's a very good replacement for uh, one of these other ones, if you're not quite as familiar with JavaScript. So with that, um, pick the one that looks right for you uh, and not because someone told you to use it. All of them have pros and cons. So don't get caught too much up in the small details. Uh, code what you want to code in. Uh, learn more than one. Um, I know React and Angular pretty well. React definitely more so than Angular. I learned Angular 1 back in the day, and I, I know a little bit of Angular 2 plus. Um, but uh, my goals are to learn Vue in depth and Blazor in depth because uh, they're all similar when it comes to how they work and the thought processes on how to build. Um, but they just have different syntax and small, small subtleties. So uh, it's pretty easy to get up and going on each of these without too much problem. Um, and if this is this is going to be shared with y'all. So if y'all see any issues or problems or typos or misquoted information, uh, please feel free, to, feel free to message me. Uh, I would like this to be uh, utilized throughout the company if, if, if people find that they're getting something out of it, if it's actually helpful in the day to day. Uh, for client interaction or developer interaction when they do have questions about these frameworks. So I'll update the information and keep pushing this out uh, and then we'll open it up to questions. There are no questions at the moment. I do have one person asking about access, but um, they just requested access to the okay. PowerPoint. So you could just yeah. let them in after the presentation. But other than that, we don't have any more questions. Cool. Quick lunch and learn. <laughs> Well, I want to thank y'all for taking the time out of your day to sit here with me and uh, go through these frameworks. Uh, hopefully this helps some of y'all out um, and gives you a quick reference for uh, future questions that people might have for you. Thank you. <laughs>